Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fai here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today we are carrying on with the um, ship series, uh, and still within the frigate, so we will jump straight in, I believe it's the ruby up next. So, the ruby just like, hands down, like the whole uh, variations of the ship, they're all just pretty good, uh, some of them being exceptionally good. Um, but yeah, if you pick up even this base version, the railgun, it's fantastic. So, you know, you're a new phase one, phase two player, feel free to use it. It's It, it just works. It's a good sh little ship. It's got good damage. And yeah, does the job. So with the telescope array, I uh, again, it's one of those strategies that struggles a little bit. And I highly recommend not personally running it. So what I like to do uh, with it is you uh, come down and you try and pick up the increased railgun damage by 40% and cooldown by 20% with additional charge, uh, energy charge instead. And then you're going to be running the hit rate against frigates and destroyers. You want to run both of them because railguns unfortunately have like a really low hit rate against frigates destroyers and this is sort of what you're going to be fighting most of the time anyway um so you picked up three there you're then going to pick up your cooldown which will just increase its damage further and obviously picking up the two uh, railgun damages there as well uh, should sort it out quite nicely. There is an argument here for dropping potentially one of the damages for one of the crit damages again for chance and uh, chance to cause and crit damage. Uh, I personally prefer just picking up the damage. Um, I know crit is good. Uh, I just I just don't like the idea of leaving my damage up to RNG and whether those crits are going off, and that will fill up all your slots anyway because you'll have the um, the, the secondary strategy, as it were, two hit rates, cooldown, and double damage, and that is your weapon. Again, though, this is a mid row ship, which means it will be getting hit by um, sort of anything indirect fire. They tend to target the mid rows first. So, any uh, ships that have missiles, torpedoes, that kind of thing is going to be hitting your ruby. So it is a good idea to try and pick up at least one of the two health per uh, increase ship HP mods like sooner rather than later. So potentially maybe uh, picking up uh, one of the ship HPs first, moving over to the weapon afterwards, getting a bit of damage on the weapon, then coming back to the armor, getting the other HP mods, then going back, finishing off the uh, main weapon system there is gonna help you out. Again, propulsion system, if you are going to try and run that thousand uh, movement speed sort of frigate only fleet, the Ruby can fit into that. It's easily got, you know, it's got the cruising speed here or plus 45 uh, for each uh, level you get. So you're going to get around a uh, thousand to 1020 something, 1030 or something like that. So easily fits within that type of fleet design as well, which is quite nice. Uh, generic battery, I'd probably leave to last. Uh, unfortunately, the base Ruby's anti uh, system just it doesn't really do anything at all. Uh, so you can ignore it for the most part. But um, in case of it getting attacked by uh do pick up the two hit rates. And uh, I, well, you haven't got a choice. You've got to pick up the two hit rates and the cooldown. So that's how I'd probably set up my uh, sort of base ruby. And then we go on to the ion cannon type. Now the ion cannon type is one of, if not the best frigate in the game. It's between this and maybe the Xeno um, or the special Karelian. It's an absurdly good damage dealer. It just has plenty of damage potential. It's basically a mini IO at the end of the day. First off for here though, again it's mid row so picking up your HP mods is going to be useful here. Uh, you can pick up your energy resistance as well at some point. And then for your laser weapon, picking up the double hit rate because again ion weapons like these, these ion cannons, uh, the IO has the same problem, the base IO does it anyway. It's got a 
pretty poor base hit rate. So making sure that you're increasing your hit rate first is gonna be really useful here. Then picking up cooldown and your double damage. Again, ignoring rapid fire here just because it just doesn't trigger often enough. A lot of my fights end within two to three minutes, which means the first 60 seconds, this won't trigger at all. And then that first minute, you're gonna get a nice little 80% pull cooldown, which is fantastic. It's gonna do some good stuff. It's gonna up your damage as long as you're not switching target, because then you're losing out on this rapid fire actually working at all. And then you've got a 10 second cooldown. So you might be lucky in a three minute fight for this to trigger twice, if that. And then, you know, you got a uh, 15 seconds of that working for, but if you look at the miniature ion cannon, you've got a four second lock on speed, uh, lock on time. So you're looking at maybe like a potential 30%, uh, well, 60% damage increase in like the worst case scenario. But it's only for 15 seconds and you've got the rest of the fight going on. So I don't personally recommend this. Uh, when we eventually come to strategies, I recommend um, we will. I mean, there is one on the, the base ruby, I guess. That's pretty decent. But most of the time, it's ones that are just like um, in a like, constant effect. They're more like a passive upgrade than they are these active um, upgrades. During the time that you are upgrading that, I do recommend trying to come in here and getting the energy system upgraded because increasing the main ion cannon fire in duration by 35% and damage frequency by 1% is a pretty decent damage upgrade. And again, you can pick up more damage in here as well, giving you another 10%. You can pick up that last 10% last uh, if you want to. We've already pumped into armor system uh, a little bit. This might be the time you pick up that energy resistance now. Uh, the only real threat, realistically, are going to be like Pulse Nebula Chasers, Xenos, and uh, Ruby Reliats that are in that sort of destroyer free composition that's quite popular at the moment. Now, one of the reasons this ship is so good is its anti air actually works. You first off want to be picking up the anti aircraft support, that means it can hit enemy aircraft in the nearby row and it increases hit rate by 40% every 30 seconds for 25 seconds. It's almost permanently up. It's one of the strategies that I go, oh right, it's only got a five second downtime. Well, that works then, take that. You then have your increased weapon system hit rates. You need both of these pretty much realistically. And your choice here is between the cooldown or the intercept. You can take either of these. I've taken the cooldown in this situation. That's just gonna up your damage against aircraft a little bit more. But at the same time, having a bit of intercept on some of these uh, ships is gonna be quite nice as well. So you can mix and match these as and when you want. And again, we hit 1,035 with the propulsion upgrades. There is only two to choose from, your warp speed and your cruising speed. So just grab them uh, and again, fits nicely in those thousand movement speed fleets. Defensive type. Now I've fallen out with this thing a little bit and then I tried it again and then I tried it in like a really silly build that someone mentioned to me in a comments recently or, or on Discord and um, I kind of like it again. It, it's, it's very much more of a PvE centric thing. However, it can work in PvP and it's having a bunch of these with Noma support because they heal themselves and then the Noma is healing them as well. It's hilarious the amount of healing that you can get off with these things. Um, so yeah, these are specifically defensive. They are frontline as well. So you will need to upgrade the armor system first. Otherwise your damage potential is just not gonna be damage potential if it's dead. So. Armor systems, picking up your ship HP on the base and then increasing your energy resistance here is gonna be the way to go. On the secondary part of the armor here, I recommend picking up the emergency repairs. It's really, really strong. When this thing triggers, you're, you, you just like, 
the healing potential is just crazy. You all of a sudden you're you're like from like five, ten percent HP back up to like 80, 85 percent, and they're basically having to go through another ship again. On top of the fact if you have got these paired with Noma support, that could be a hundred percent, like no problem at all. So it is just quite funny to watch. Um People struggle with killing these a little bit on the front line. It's definitely worth noting that this could potentially replace Carillion Special in a pinch. So if you have got Carillion Special, you're using them in another fleet, but you still want another frigate destroyer fleet, consider Ruby Heavy Defensives with Noma support on your front line. Again, pick up the emergency repairs here. You then want to move over and then uh, pick up either the uh, increased repair effectiveness. This increases the amount of repair done to itself, which is really, really nice. And then you want to pick up the ship HP. You got two lots of the uh, repair effectiveness. You can either take both of them at the same time, either take the ship HP first and then take the repair effectiveness. I personally, if you go the route that I've gone where you picking up the uh, resistances and the HP from the other system first, pick up the um, repair effectiveness twice first and then picking up your increased ship HP by 2%. I then personally recommend either running the crit damage received by the main system here, which will stop the weapon getting damaged, or you can increase, uh, you can get this one, which reduces the damage taken by this specific system. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the uh, defensive type. We have got the siege torpedoes. You're going to go hit rate here for certain. They are siege torps, so the big torps, which means they don't hit frigates destroyers particularly well. So picking up the double um, frigate uh, destroyer hit rate is going to be really good here. And then you can uh, choose to mix or match a bit of cooldown with some damage or go all damage or all cooldown. Both are pretty viable. You're just going to be hitting harder potentially with the uh, higher damage. Again, Personally, I like having the uh, cooldown. That means there's more missiles out with the hit rate bonuses, which means you're more likely to get a good hit off and actually get the damage going. Um, other than that, you have the propulsion system. This thing loses its anti-air capability. Not that the base ruby has any. It does lose the IOs, which is a bit unfortunate, but it gains that extra armor with the healing potential there. Cruising speed can go up and warp speed can go up, again bringing this to 1035 movement speed. So again, this can fit in the high speed frigate fleets if you so desire. And that is it for this video. So, how do you like this series? Are you enjoying it? Um, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.